So let's experiment a little bit more with CSS and what you can do with it. One thing that you can do is you can surround any anchor tag and image uh, tag and you can surround it with a div. We're going to surround this one with a div ID equals quote microwave sam icon quote and we're going to end it with the div tag. Now what I'll be showing you is that we're going to go to our CSS file and manipulate it by putting the pound or the number symbol microwave sam icon and inside these curly braces you can manipulate the height and width in a way that it overrides the HTML because in the HTML we had set a height and width for the image but you can override it in CSS and another thing is there's an attribute called auto for the height and width where that value basically if I set the width to a certain amount then based on the proportions it'll set the auto um, height automatically and you can set the border dash radius colon a certain amount of pixels now the image did not change because I did not specify that I am manipulating the image so that's because um, I just want to show a little thing where you don't necessarily have to set the ID or classes inside a div you can set anchor tags to an ID or class or you can even set an image or a paragraph etc any section you can set an ID or class to it now it did not work for the anchor tag because we want to target the image itself and because we did not specify in the CSS that we're targeting the image based on that ID name we need to place the ID name inside the image tag and you can see the border radius and the size has changed and it still keeps that proportion now I want to step a little bit backwards and go over some things about color now we went over color and you can do color colon any color name that CSS knows but a useful tip is to go to colorpicker.com which I'll leave a link in the description and you can set the color to anything with the drag system and it'll give you a number letter value and you copy this number letter value and instead of writing the name of the color you put the pound or number symbol and then that six digit slash letter uh, value and paste it in and it gives you that exact color now this is very useful for if you have a color that you prefer and you need to set it to that specific color instead of saying blue red white now another thing we can do is a for the anchor tags which are normally for links and colon hover or visited and when you hover over a link it should turn red like here because I set the color colon red now there's also another useful one called a colon visited which just as it says is fairly self-explanatory when the color colon is a certain color like green that visited link if you have already visited that link will be green but that also kind of changes the hovering though and then there's another use for one called a colon active but we won't get into that one next is box shadow now what box shadow is in HTML all elements fit inside boxes because they have their own space now I'll paste some code I have from previous project and it's box dash shadow colon you write a number of pixels for the horizontal shadow a number of pixels for a vertical shadow a number of pixels for the blur and a color and I set it for the image of this logo but you can't really see it that well so what I'll do is I'll bring it up for my header tag and what box shadows are useful for is that they provide a little effect uh, for the shadow on for that element inside its box and it can be used for good layering um, small effect that might be useful for stacking or s making layers seem like they're on top of each other that's why I really find box shadow useful for so it's a useful thing to know now the video in the course of the two videos for the CSS crash course have been just going over 
things that will be useful for you for you for the future getting the bare fundamentals embedded in your head and to get yourself started on your own web page and we are gonna move on with with colon 90 percent in the body now you can set width and heights to a certain percentage of the entire space and when I said to 90 percent 10 percent of it became white space you can only access 90 percent of the width because the body contains all the contents so the width is now 90 percent and you may see a lot of web pages with the width being a certain percentage because sometimes having the words all the way to the left all the way to the right is not useful to you now I have five images in my folder for uh, the project file it's just in my image folder and I have these five images and what we're gonna explain next for you guys is padding and margin now what padding and margin is it's the spacing of your HTML page how does padding and margin work anyway? Well, first of all, we're going to get these images inside. We're going to copy and paste it. Let me just space it a little bit better using BR. A couple BRs will give it a line on its own. And we're going to give the images a line on its own. Now, these images are just small logo images for Twitter, GitHub, Facebook, I think. No, not Facebook, but all you need to know are their small images that we're going to be messing around with margin and padding so firstly I need to type in the images and I'll do that by copying this one line let me just see the names of these images okay so I'll just copy the Twitter image source and if you remember from our HTML to put images you just put IMG then source equal the name of the image based on where it is so you need to put to put the di correct directories so I'll just rename these PNGs to whatever they're supposed to be so we get five small logo images right next to each other now you can do spacing by doing an the and symbol nbsp semicolon I believe and we went over this in HTML you can do manual spaces in HTML but in CSS is much easier because you can set a number of pixels to space it now what we should be doing is we can set the style equals in the HTML itself by this type of syntax with style with the equal quote um, the attribute then the colon typical CSS and you can set this actually in HTML now what we did was we just set the margin colon to five pixels I believe and you can see that the margin spaced out now margin is whatever is outside of the image so outside of the image we basically push five pixels of space outside of the image to create or create some spacing quote unquote um, and you can do this with other files you can write the style of the CSS that was meant to be in the CSS file in the HTML file if you write inside the tag style equals quote in in quotes uh, you write the CSS attributes like I did in there you can just maybe pause the video to see this now we set margins to 5 pixels each and what we're doing is we're just pushing 5 pixels up, left, right, down outside of the image to create spacing. Now let's just give this image of Twitter picture with uh, an A anchor tag of uh, Twitter.com and we'll just set the link for this image to Twitter.com and now when you click on it you see you just click on it and Twitter opens up which is just fine um, this will be getting to my uh, explanation now the difference between margin and padding you might wonder what is padding well padding hypothetically you could do the same thing with spacing if I had done padding colon 5 pixels it would basically be the same thing 
but how I'm gonna explain it to you is setting the background dash color colon to a certain color like red let's just say semicolon and now you can see the inside or the background of this uh, picture uh, turns red in the center turned red because this is a transparent photo so the inners uh, turned red because it's basically empty but now if I change it to padding it turns red on the outside too and you might wonder why why does padding change well what padding does instead of push outside of the image it enlarges the image by the five pixels up down left right so in so what we get from margin and padding is that margin is literally the outside of the image while padding just pushes or will extend the image size it's outside to that five pixels or whatever pixels you set. So when we keep the background dash color colon red in padding, that five pixels of space in between will turn red while in margin, since you're just pushing away from the image, the background color is just the inners of that picture because you're just pushing away. The picture itself did not enlarge, but in padding, the picture itself does enlarge. So one thing that you can do is you can set specific directions like padding um, dash top. You can also do margin dash top, padding dash left, any direction you want. And if you put two values in padding, the first value will be for top and bottom and the second value will be left and right. So top and bottom is 5 pixels as you can see and left and right is 20 pixels and you can just change it to four values now four values think of it as going clockwise it goes top right bottom left so top was five pixels i think right was 10 pixels bottom was another five pixels and left was 20 pixels and you can see the spacing difference and how padding kind of works it just enlarges the image think of it as kind of enlarging the image basically and oh bottom was Let's see, top, right, bottom, left. So bottom was 20 pixels and left was 40 pixels. My mistake. So that's how margin and padding works. And if I had done it with margin, you would just see white space instead of it being the background color of red. Because again, to repeat, it's important to understand that margin just pushes away from the image, does not enlarge it. But padding actually does enlarge the image. So why just... Um, did was I set the border dash color colon black five pixels and it is not showing up because I forgot one thing my mistake uh, so in the image I just put border dash color colon and one thing that I forgot is that you need to put uh, a value well first of all I need to change it to border not border dash color I need to put a value for what it is so I want a solid one pixel hashtag or number symbol three 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 for a kind of grayish slash black line and you can enlarge the pixel and this is good for uh, creating an outline because we didn't go over outline and I totally forgot that it's good to know about outline and to do that you just do border colon a pixel amount and then say that it's a solid pixel amount for a line and then you can set the color and then in the body to go back and review margin and padding uh, you can set the margins to 10 pixels or a certain number of pixels because you never see web pages with all the words and everything all the way to the left of the page or all the way to the right of the page you kind of see it in the center of the page now thanks for watching everyone this has been the end of the crash course and remember there's also a resource that I recommend you to go to and that is CSS reference on the w3schools.com I'll leave a link in the description it's www.w3schools.com slash CSS ref slash default dot ASP and I'll leave that in the description it contains mostly and a lot of the property and descriptions 
of all these CSS attributes that you can set on your own page. I only really went over the most important ones that I thought that uh, every user should know. But there's a lot that you definitely should learn as you work your way up in learning how to use CSS. And this will lead on to Bootstrap. Next tutorial. In addition, a great way to learn and get better in CSS and HTML is right clicking on a page and viewing page sources to existing sites. Now very popular sites will have very complicated CSS in combination of JavaScript and it'll be very confusing. But for smaller sites, you can always click on the CSS slash style.css or whatever CSS file they have and you can just open it in a new tab and observe what CSS they're using and you can learn a few new tricks. Now watching videos isn't the best way in my opinion but you need to really get out and make something on your own and make something new.